Good afternoon. We're going to discuss the heated cooler line flusher from GTEC. The, the machine itself is designed to clean the cooler line when the transmission has been removed. It's a very important part of any transmission service. And the reason for that is that when the transmission fails, it fails at high heat condition. When the red indicator die in the transmission fluid turns black, it indicates that the transmission fluid has been filled with contaminants and also reached its maximum uh, usability. Now, when we flush, one of the major reasons that we're going to flush is that we have to be able to put the heat in the line because we want to expand that cooler so that it'll release the trapped debris and let it flow and be trapped into the filters of the, of the cooler line flusher itself. So we're going to back flush for a full 15 minutes, we're going to forward flush for 5 minutes, and then back flush again for 15 minutes. And then we'll check our work with a check screen. The first thing you do when you remove, when you remove the uh, cooler from the box is you're going to, you want to remove this white cap. The white cap is to be removed. This is just for shipping. Take this and you throw it away. Then the next thing we're going to, we want to do is to be able, you want to plug the unit in to a 115 volt uh, outlet that's at least a minimum of a 15 amp circuit. Be sure that you plug it into a 110 volt outlet with a minimum of 15 amp service. Do not use an extension cord. Do not plug it into a drop light. Make sure there are no other appliances on the same line. When you turn the, the heat switch on, when the red light comes on, it indicates that the fluid level has dropped down below the, flu below the float switch. This means that we need to add additional fluid to the tank. When there's efficient fluid to the tank, the red light will go off and only the green light will glow. Fill the tank with eight gallons of ATF. It will hold up to 10, but remember, you need to leave room in the tank for expansion when the uh, heater is, is on. After you fill the tank full of ATF, then you want to go ahead and install the vent tower. What the vent tower does is it will return the vapors, the liquid vapor, back into the tank and allow the air to escape because we will be pumping air into the tank. Next thing that we want to do is we will ins install the tool kit. Then you want to run your hoses through the uh, rubber grommets that are found in the tool tray holder. And be sure that you connect the two hoses together. There are no springs inside, inside the quick disconnects. The reason for that is that if you left springs in here and keepers, it'll, they'll plug with dirt every time that you flush the vehicle. So we, so we go ahead and remove the springs. Be sure you don't dip them, pour them toward the floor because they will leak on the floor. Connect your hoses back together. We want to install our uh, directional control valve. There are two nuts in the back. You don't have to undo the two front nuts, but just in the two, take the two back nuts, push them through the holder, and then tighten them up with a 7 16 inch wrench. The directional control valve allows you to change the direction of the flow by just simply moving the valve from position one to position two. To start off with, we want to go ahead and put this in, put our uh, valve into position two. Make sure that the purge valve, the pre-purge valve, is in the flush position. That means the needle needs to be pointing toward the filters. We're going to run our first check on the machine to make sure that we've hooked up everything properly. The hoses are connected together. We're going to check our flow meter to make sure that we're getting at least three to four gallons per minute worth of flow. Now we'll turn the machine on. And we're getting over six gallons a minute so we can see that the machine is hooked up properly and the pump is working well. The next thing we're gonna do is we'll need to hook up the air hose to the, to the, to the uh, air valve. Again, we want to flush between the temper between 140 and 160 degrees. As you can see by this thermometer, we still need to raise another 20 another 20 degrees. If after 20 minutes we haven't reached our operating temperature, then you want to adjust the temperature by uh, utilizing the temperature adjuster on the front of the heater.
To adjust the heat, merely squeeze the rubber tip that's coming out, turn it to the left to turn it down, turn it to the right to turn it up. Do not remove the rubber cap. The next thing we want to do is select the proper fitting for our cooler line. GTEC provides you with, with a number of fittings. These are your domestic fittings, your Honda only fittings, your import banjo adapters. We also have the push on fittings which are available. After you, then you want to select the fittings. These will be the fittings that we'll be using on this particular vehicle. The next thing we want to do is attach your selected fitting. <laughs> Remove the hose connector to prepare the hoses to connect to the cooler lines. Hook the blue line to the inlet line of the transmission cooler. Hook the red line to the outlet line. This is two and one. What we're going to do is we're going to be flushing this back, we're going to be flushing backwards, uh, uh, doing a back flush, and we want to get the first really dirty oil out of that cooler. We don't want to put air through that cooler line like we used to do by blowing air through it, because when we do that, we're, we're simply polluting the atmosphere. So what this does is it's going to get the, the dirtiest part of the oil out. Make sure that the needle is pointed to the blue hose. Make sure that the blue hose is in a good oil receptacle. Now we're ready to go. We'll turn this on until the oil changes colors. As you can see, the first oil that came out is really, really black. We're going to keep this going until it actually changes colors on it. Okay, now after the pre-flush, we're going to turn this back to flush after the pre-purge, and we're ready to go. Make sure that your needle is in the number two position. That'd be pointing toward the blue hose. Now we're ready to go. Turn the, turn the unit on. Check your flow meter. As you can see, we're pulsating 1,750 times per minute. We will let this flush for a full 15 minutes. At this time, we're also going to turn on the air. This is our check screen. This is how we check to find out if we've got all the debris out of the cooler line. We're going to install this on top of the filter. By doing that, we're going to have to first blow the air out of the line. We'll turn our air on. That'll blow all of the fluid out of the filters. The next, we're going to remove a filter. We'll place the filter screen right on top of the filter, like this. Spin the filter back on, make sure it goes on tight. You can put a filter screen on both of the filters, but the first filter is fine. The first filter is a, no by, is a bypass filter, the second filter is a no bypass filter. Now we're going to turn on our pump and we're going to flush for five minutes. Turn the pump off after five minutes. And at this time, go ahead and turn your heat off. You won't need it anymore. Crack the air again. We're going to blow all of the fluid back out of that filter.
turn off your air, remove your filter, examine your screen. If you see any dirt or debris on this screen, it's telling you that we need to continue to flush. As you can see, our screen is clean, so we have this job is finished. Put your filter back on. Make sure it's tight. Take your screen and put it back in your tray. The next thing we'll do is, un is unhook our lines. I want to thank Jim for allowing us to shoot this sequence here at Chabot College. And Jim is going to go ahead and complete the rest of our uh, operation. He'll disconnect the cooler lines and uh, put it together. And we want to again thank you from GTEC for allowing us to come today. No problem. Thank you, Steve. Okay, the first thing you want to do, Jim, is just snap your lines off. Then use your connector and connect both lines back together. That way they won't spill on the floor. Lay them right on the handle. Take your two wrenches and disconnect your fittings and put them back in the case. Now we're ready for the next job. We've completed this one, the cooler is clean.